On this episode of Purposely Curious, we discuss the many things currently going on in the horror culture, and we also talk Halloween. Leone D'Antonio is the expert I go to to learn all things horror, so I'm definitely looking forward to Halloween this year. Are you one of the millions who like to start decorating for Halloween in August? Well, if you are, this episode is to get you all in the Halloween spirit, so get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, Leone. Greetings, Mary. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what's new with you? Um, well, it's hot and humid <laughs> in LA. Well, outside of LA. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, not too happy with it. Um, but let me ask you this. Do you feel like it's more humid out here than it was years ago? Um, it's always been kind of like dry heat, I remember. Yes. But I feel like the last few years, it's like humid. Yeah, we, um, we're definitely a desert climate, but, um, lately we've been having the, well, we had a, a series of storms, but a couple monsoons, we even had a hurricane that went by just past Mexico, just like down south of a couple of, well, a week ago, I think. So we're still seeing the after effects. So there's a lot of that going on, which mm-hmm. sucks because it's, it's just pushing the humidity right through us. And even though it's like, hey, 80 degrees, sunny, and then it's like, it feels like 115 and you can't breathe and you can't yeah. stop sweating because it's just so humid, you know? Yeah. And guess what? You know how I drive to see patients and stuff? Yeah. My AC in my car isn't working. Oh, no. So, you know, even though I live where I live was like close to the beach, it, it does get hot. And, you know, with the humidity, it feels hotter. Right. Um, not as hot as other places, but I sometimes have to drive inland. And so if you guys can picture like kind of like the coast of California, the more inland you drive, the hotter it gets. Right. So my seats are like, um, they're not leather, something that's like leather. I can't think of the name. Pleather. Or are they pleather or are they leather seats? I don't know. Anyways. So yeah, I've been miserable. So I made an appointment (laughs) to get it looked at, um, Thursday. Honestly, it, so, it, it could be as simple as a recharge. Yes, but the guy said that the only way for them to know is like they're going to extract all the stuff in there, like the air. I don't know. I'm For the sake, I guys, I'm sorry if you guys know what you guys are talking about. I don't, so I'm going to paraphrase it as terrible as possible. <laughs> but he kind of said that, you know, they're going to take all the, I'm going to say air, but it's it, there's a name for it extract it to kind of make sure that if it is low they're going to fill it to the right pressure because you can also it could, the pressure could also be off as well right um but basically yeah i'm getting that looked at on thursday so i'm going to be miserable one more day one oh, and man. a half more day yeah <laughs> but sucks. i got a you know i got a job to do right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, so you're over there in your air conditioned apartment, and yeah, I'm over here. I have no in, choice with a fan on. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, I have no choice. Like if I don't, everything dies around me or just falls apart. So it's like, yeah, I always have to be careful with that. Yeah. So, and what's new with you? I've uh, just been busy. Just lately, it's been last few weeks have been very busy. Just. Um, you know, working on projects and trying to get ahead on some of these and pitch some ideas and it's, it's been okay. It's just been busy, mm-hmm. you know, trying to enjoy life at the same time. Um, but yeah, this weather sucks cause I've been trying to, I've been wanting to do things outdoors and it's like, yeah, it's too humid for that, too hot for that. So I've been kind yeah. of just waiting for a little bit, you know, changes, you know? Yeah. And the humidity. And the thing too, is that, I wonder, obviously the the reason why we don't get hurricanes in California, we get like the remnants of it, right? But the reason we don't get hurricanes is because the ocean water is cold here, you know, versus if you go to Mexico, it's warmer. Um, and so that's why you don't really hear of it. But I wonder if with the hum- weather being more humid, if that would affect the ocean temperature and maybe put us more at risk for hurricanes in the future you think uh it's a good question i i think it's also a pattern of how the winds blow from the north mm-hmm. so it kind of cushions us it kind of pushes down 
you know, mm -hmm. and it keeps the those weather systems away from us. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike those, those go towards the southwest. They don't go towards the southeast, and that's why the hurricanes come up the southeast right through the Gulf of Mexico. You know, so I yeah. think that might be part of it. I'm, I'm only guessing, um, but it's possible that if you know all that changes in the future, you know, we're screwed <laughs> because yeah. all we need is one good hurricane to come through LA and we're done. You know. Yeah. But. I hope not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would, um, you know, drought's over, right? All that water comes at one time. Yeah. Like 16, 1,600 quadrillion gallons of water at one time. It's like, yeah, drought's over forever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't say forever, but enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like one year. <laughs> but I did want to ask you about... You went to this thing. Do you mind if we talk about it? That sex club thing? Yeah, we can't talk about that. <laughs> the swingers party? Yeah. Yeah. There, I mean, there no. were some big name people there, so I can't, you know. Yeah. What are you, Amber Heard now? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a low blow, man. It's like, you, it's like you can't give me, like, what are you, Hugh Hefner? Like, what are you thinking? Of? So the, no, no, you Amber Heard. I'm like, damn, girl doesn't like me. <laughs> My friend Mary doesn't like me, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop it. Um, but the Midsummer Scream in Long Beach, oh. the Halloween and Horror Convention. Yes. Um, so I wanted to tell you how I thought about it and I thought about going and I took a picture of the thing, the flyer, and I completely forgot about it. So have you heard of Rad Coffee Drink, uh, yes. like coffee shop in Long Beach? Yes. So I spend a lot more time in Long Beach now because a lot of the cases that I'm dealing with are over there. So every once in a while, I go there for their specialty blended horchata um, drink. Right. And I had seen this and I was like, oh, I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to make time to go. And I completely forgot about it. Um, and I thought of you and then forgot about it and then saw you on the stories that you were there. <laughs> yes. So I thought it'd be nice if you'd fill us in on this beautiful Midsummer Scream convention. So first of all, I'm actually really, really curious why you would go. Because I can't even get you to watch a movie. So well, get here, I'm yes, thinking, why would Mary go? The f yeah, so the flyer kind of was making it seem more of like there's vendors, you know, like yes. makeup stuff. So that was what drew me to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, and, that, and you know what? Yeah. And, that, and that is true. And that is absolutely the reason to go for the vendors. And the bonus is that once you're inside, you have access to all these panels. So like if you're interested in like, um, for example, one of the cool, one of the coolest panels that happened was Kirk Hammett from Metallica was there. Yes. I saw that. Interviewing the kids of the universal monsters, you know, like Boris, yeah. Boris Karlov's son. Um, oh my God, I can't think of their names right now, but all the, famous people that made the monsters in 1920s, you know, they're the kids. So, yeah. and he's a big, he's a big horror collector. So he actually has in his home, the actual posters from those movies. Can you imagine the 1920s poster for Dracula and you know, all that, you know, mm. like he mm -hmm. owns that. And those are multi-million dollar things that he auctioned, he bid for that he won, you know? Yeah. So it was cool. Like if, you know, if that's what you want to see, it's cool. You just got to, you know, get into that room, you know? And yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, oh, I was going to say, I also saw that Christine McConnell, who I like, who I just happened to find on YouTube one day, uh, like a year or two ago, was on. Apparently, she also has a Netflix show that I didn't realize about. Um, but have you seen her? <laughs> I got a story she for like, you. I got to tell okay. you. I'll tell you the story after because it's a, okay. it's a story. <laughs> okay. But okay, yes, I perfect. do know who she is. I do know who she is. Yes, yeah, so I was like <laughs> bummed out that I completely forgot about this and I really want you to like fill us in. Leone had kind of mentioned, you know, he was my first guest and he we did the horror culture episode. So I thought this was really something to talk about. Yeah, it's it's a fun convention. I'll tell you, it's a family friendly event. So it's like, yes, you're going to see creepy shit and monsters and creatures walking around, you know, but you're also going to see booths and people that cater to kids, you know, and a lot of, a lot of families bring their kids, you know, cause it is a family, mm -hmm. family friendly. And 
There are vendors. So there's a lot of cool vendors. Anything you could think of, like things to wear, like simple things like clothing and t-shirts and jewelry, you know, to, you know, care care, skincare products, to Halloween masks, to special effects, you know. Um, some places are, some setups, some booths are just a display, you know, they're, they're promoting their products, you know, and, you know, there's a lot to see, there's a lot to do. And the cool thing also, besides the vendors, they have a whole second part, like a whole, like a double the size of the convention, like it's called the Hall of Shadows. And what they do is it's like, for example, like, you know, like, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, you know, they announce the big movies, right? Like mm-hmm. the new Avengers movie and all that, right? Like the big, you know. So over here at Midsummer Scream, they bring in Queen Mary. They bring in um, the Haunted Hayride people. They bring in Universal Horror Nights people. And each one of them gives a small presentation to show you what's coming up in October. Yeah. So you get a sneak peek of, oh, what are the cool haunts? What are they doing this year, you know? Um, so, and also in that Hall of Shadows, they set up a mini haunted walkthrough experience you know so Mm -hmm. if you want to go to like the queen mary for example you know they set up they set it up so that you walk through and you get one good scare like that's it and it's like it's like one you know it's one thing but they spend like a week building building that and it looks amazing you know so it's not just the big ones there's also a lot of small ones around california around southern california you know Mm -hmm. like some in orange county and riverside county you know that do these haunts and they do them really well you know so they 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 build them so they give you a taste and and they they tell you you know come on out you know check us out support us you know so there's a lot to do there and what i love is that you can just leave anytime and because it's long beach long beach convention center you literally cross the street and there's one million places to eat and hang out and you can Mm -hmm. come back in after you're done you know so it's like it's a cool event um so is this a yearly thing Yes, it was gone okay. for the last two years, um, or 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 the last one was scaled down a lot. You know, this this this, this came. This is the first year it came back big, like super huge, and uh, so we usually have a booth there, and we usually do a panel as well. And this year we had a booth mostly to promote Screenbox, which is our new streaming service. Um, yeah. People... Now, for those people who don't know who we are, who is we? Mm my well my podcast we're 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 a part of the bloody disgusting network and they're um they have a new horror streaming service called screenbox and uh, it's actually been around for a while but now it's getting big because we've signed some big deals to get some big movies so people usually watch shutter which is part of amc you know like you subscribe to shutter whatever i don't know what it is six five dollars a month six dollars a month and shutter it's a hundred it's like netflix but for horror movies it's just horror movies 100 percent, right Mm-hmm. and it's and you know some of them are you know movies you recognize some of them are smaller movies that just you know that just came out and 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 there's a lot of good stuff there's a lot of good stuff by filmmakers you know and you'd be surprised to see big name actors in these movies you know so yeah screenbox is a new service uh definitely competing with shutter um you know so we were there to promote that so we had a mini booth for our podcast but we also did a panel on sunday afternoon and this panel like literally came together at three in the morning <laughs> that day because there was so many unknown things and we were there um to introduce the spirit halloween movie so if you're mm. familiar with the spirit halloween stores you ever been in one no every october you know like think of like some famous fashion store or shoe store that goes out of business and then every September, mm-hmm. October, they throw they throw that orange banner and it says Spirit Halloween. Oh, and, yes. And you can walk in and buy costumes and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've been to them. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm like, of course, everybody's, I everybody's been there. <laughs> yes, um, yes. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. No, but a lot of people don't know it by, you know, by name, you know, unless. You, you know, just know the sign. The unless orange, you know the sign. sign. Yes. Yeah. Or unless exactly. you know the joke, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they made a movie. Yeah. Um, and, wow! Really? And, yeah, and there's there's there has been a lot of secrecy about the movie. So, like the night before, the night sorry, the night of, we we're kind of like we're like okay, but we need to like we didn't get to see the movie, and then we realized well the movie's not done yet. It comes out this October. Um, you know, we we do know the actors who are in it. Um, but we need a preview. So we we did a lot of negotiation with the people who made the movie, 
So they brought it, you know, and then we said, all right, we did a, a live panel with a few thousand people, uh, which was pretty awesome. They gave us the biggest stage, the biggest ballroom, the biggest, um, the, the main, the main stage, you know, and it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was beautiful. And we had the writer, um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, cinematographer and the producer of the movie. And, you know, we talked to them about making this movie and it, it's a great story. Like the writer, she's a, a retired Royal Air Force from Australia, you know, oh. and, uh, you know, mom, you know, uh, stay at home mom. And she wrote the movie, she wrote the idea and. This producer found the script and he's like, this is great. And let us, let us approach the, uh, spirit Halloween people and see if they want to get involved. And, you know, some of the characters you see in that store, some of these animatronics and characters are actually coming to life in the movie. Oh, wow. So the cool thing is that it's a family friendly movie for kids and adults alike, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's very few family friendly horror movies that come out, you know, these years. Um, that's one of them. And uh, we usually call, I, call, I call it gateway horror, you know, because it's like the gateway drug that gets you interested in the horror genre, you know. Right. Um, and they're usually, they're fun. They're fun, you know. So I'm glad they're making another that kids can enjoy, and uh, it looks very good. They, you know, we screened, you know, I think it was seven minutes of the movie, like just different parts of it, you know. And people loved it. People were very excited for it. So I'm excited for it, you know. And it comes out in October, so that should be fun. Yes. Um, but, but overall, yeah, I recommend it. Like you look, you don't have to be into the scary, spooky stuff or, you know, or into the crazy, whatever. It's a fun event. It's something to mm -hmm. do. It's, you know, you're supporting the, the people that, you know, that put this together. They do a really good job. You know, everybody there is very nice, very, you know, very helpful. Um, and as I always say, the people in the horror community are way different than the rest of the entertainment business. They're, mm -hmm. they're just, you know. They're just a friendly bunch. They're, they're, they're just, you know, they're just like you. They just want to, you know, be nice to one another and hang out and talk about this or that, you know, horror, goth, whatever, you know? So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun event. I, I recommend it. Yeah. I'm definitely going to go next year and I'm really bummed out that I completely forgot about it, but I've been kind of like absent-minded with things sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm actually looking forward to Halloween this year. Mm. Yeah. So I think that was one of the reasons why I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I should see about going. Yeah. Um, so I definitely, you know, you and I went to the pumpkin patch and um, last year. Well, what would you call it? Oh, wait, what patch? was it called? It was called, uh, I think it was, it was called Carved, right? Yes. From Wisconsin yes, Gardens. I, yeah. Yes, and I loved it so much. So I definitely want to do stuff like that this year, just like get in the spirit. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's happening again. That's happening again, and so is the the other one, the light show. They're both. I think they just announced the both November of them. one. Yeah, yeah. So every year is it different? Like the pumpkin carvings? I don't. Uh, typically, yes, but I don't know because I don't know if I told you the last time that I was there. Remember that it was so massive that like one one tree alone, that massive tree in the middle of the whole forest had like 4,000 carved pumpkins in the tree alone, you know? So yeah. that, that, to me, that was, it was beautiful because it's, there's no lights there. It's pitch black darkness. And all you see mm -hmm. is the tree and the, you know, jack o' lanterns, you know? And, um, and I really wanted that, but it, they didn't have that when you and I went, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I think possibly because of COVID or, you know, or restrictions right. or just, you know, people aren't coming out, you know, supporting. So they just weren't able to go that big, you know, or, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what they have planned this year. It would be nice if they went huge again, but you know, yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful. You know. Yeah. If monkeypox doesn't get crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but enough on that. Um, did you see the trailer for uh, Rob Zombie's new movie? I did. What'd you think? Uh, you well, <laughs> we should tell people. I had the same reaction. So okay. you're you're talking about the monsters right yes so so i clicked on the trailer one more in the one morning because i i go online kind of like the newspaper right and i was optimistic but i wasn't too sure about it after i saw the trailer um but i don't know i don't know what you might say about yeah, it yeah you know well here's the thing I, I like the cast um you know and i i respect that he's putting his own spin on it like his own ideas in it into you know 
Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. It's a Universal Pictures movie, right? So that's, that's a big studio, okay? And even though he made the movie, it's more than likely, highly, highly possible, like 99%, that somebody else except him made that trailer, that preview. Mm. So I'm always kind of bummed at that because sometimes they tell you they show you everything you know and you're like fuck they just told me the whole movie like why do they why do they do that you know (laughs) and then sometimes they don't sometimes it's a huge mystery and it turns out to be a big surprise and that that's what i like i like new ideas i like surprises i like to be surprised shocked or walk out of there you know smiling laughing or you know something you know give me some emotion you know Uh, so it's possible he did not cut that trailer it's highly possible and um People were, you know, people were like, well, yeah, it looks like garbage. So that's why it's going to Netflix. And it's like, no, that was always the deal, you know? Mm-hmm. So people are not giving them, you know, the respect of currently what we know, you know? And mm-hmm. I, and I understand that, you know, but, but what I saw, I was not, I was not impressed. I was like, I don't know about this, you know, but I'm still going to watch it. It'll be on Netflix. I'm still going to watch this. And I'm, I'm hopeful mm-hmm. that, that it's, that it is something entertaining and funny. Um, and if it's not that's gonna be a huge loss for him you know yeah um but i don't know are you a fan of his um movies um yes yes i would say yes because he i even though he does a very common thing with each one like there's kind of similar characters in all his movies which is like the characters are very very dark it's very dirty it's very violent, very sexual, you know, it's like, you know, um, but that's his vision. That's his own thing. You know, like that's not, he's not copying somebody else. Like, like when he made the, the Halloween, Halloween two remakes, you know, like I, I, you know, maybe I didn't like them at first, but when you think about it, it's like, the, that was his vision. That's what he, that's what he, he chose to do something different, you know, and you have to respect different, but people don't, and I understand that people want more of the same, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why, you know, it's very divisive. Like people like what he did, some people hate what he did. But the three that he did, um, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell, those were fun movies because they play out more like a horror comedy, you know? But mm-hmm. ultra violent, you know, and dark and just just, you know, dirty, you know, and um but I love that he pulls out these actors that you have not seen for 30, 40 years, you know. Mm-hmm. that have been retired but he you know maybe he was a fan of like watching dukes of hazard so he's like oh i'm gonna get that girl he i, I know he was a fan of like uh three's company because he got nurse cherry and nurse cherry is in mm-hmm. is in the devil's reject she's got a fucking shocking scene you know but i'm like oh damn i'm like that's nurse terry you know you know so he is definitely a fan of the old tv from the 70s and the 80s you know so he likes pulling these actors who are not working back into the game and it's like hey want to be my movie you know and he does something fun with it so so yeah, for the most part, I would say I'm a fan of his vision, what he does, um, you know, and, and some of these are great and some of them are okay, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You haven't and seen, you haven't seen I, any of his movies, right? No, and I won't. <laughs> you yeah. won't sleep, trust me. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm like, no, and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> what about Hocus Pocus? The sequel from the 1993 movie is coming out finally yeah, on Disney Plus on September 30th. That's a family-friendly movie that yes. has a cult following. Yes, huge. Do you think it'll be good? It'll, I mean, they got the three of them back, right? Yeah. Now, I don't know who wrote it, so I can't say like it'll be good or whatever. You know, it'll be entertaining because people want to see the same three, you know, uh, witches and, and stuff. And you know, and yes, it's family-friendly horror again. And and. Uh, the, I, don't, I don't know if you know this, but this is this is a fun trivia for you. Um, do you know who directed the first movie? No, I don't. A, a gentleman by the name of Kenny Ortega. And Kenny Ortega mm-hmm. currently works for, I think, Disney Channel. You know, he's like a executive or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But Kenny Ortega is famous for the most... Uh, for the most memorable dance scenes you've ever seen in a movie. Have you ever seen yeah. the movie Dirty Dancing? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go put something through my heart right now because I think I just died. <laughs> you have not seen Dirty Dancing. No, I was oh, like God, too little. Okay, but you're not too little now. 
I mean, I guess I could watch it. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it this weekend. Okay, I'm giving you homework here, okay? All right. It's I'm going to watch it. And, and if you guys haven't watched it, let's watch <laughs> There's it nobody out there that's the, everybody's like shaking their hand. They're like, Mary, what? Are you saying it's just me? Just you. <laughs> it's just you. <laughs> No, no. Okay. I'm, of course, I'm you know just teasing you, but <laughs> but no. But seriously, Dirty Dancing has some iconic dancing. Okay, have you ever seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? No. No. <laughs> okay. Also has a scene where there's iconic dancing. Mm. Have you ever seen Five Hundred Days of Summer? Yes. Also has a scene with iconic dancing. Have you ever seen? Well, none of us saw it because he died. But Michael Jackson's very last tour. We were seeing, no, but um, I saw the clips. where he was, yeah, where he was like yes. uh, uh, rehearsing. Yes. So Kenny Ortega choreographed all those dance moves in all those famous movies. Mm. So he was a he's a famous, and, and those are and it's it's like history. Like people reenact the dirty dancing scenes all the time because it's you know it's iconic. You know nobody nobody puts baby in the corner. You know <clears throat> mm -hmm. Patrick Swayze. Like you got to watch the movie. But the crazy thing is he directed um, Hocus Pocus. And I don't know what else he directed, to be honest with you. I know he directed that movie, and it's a fun movie. Uh, I don't know who made this new one, um, but I know it's got a fan base, and, and people go crazy to watch that first one every year, you know? So I think, mm -hmm. the, think this one will be like, wow, we get to watch two, the original and the second one, you know? So it'll be fun. You know, more, more family fun, you know? Yeah. So I have another one that I'm going to mention just because... There's a link here. So I'm on gizmodo.com. Okay. For the Friday the 13th movie. Mm. On the on a recent episode of the Boo Crew podcast, <laughs> oh, via Bloody Disgusting, producer Roy Lee suggested news regarding a new Friday the 13th project is on the way. And I guess his, uh, this is your podcast. Yes. <laughs> breaking <laughs> breaking news everyone <laughs> bing, bing, bing. So. so so yes um when you think of horror icons people think of freddy krueger uh, jason from friday the 13th that's who you're talking about with the hockey mask mm -hmm. and then also michael myers with the white mask from halloween you know so everybody's been wanting a friday the 13th movie but there hasn't been one because of the lawsuits the guy who lawsuits yeah it's been like it's been oh. tied up in lawsuits the, the guy who wrote the movie the guy who mm -hmm. directed the movie the, and one of the producers have been, have been fighting because they're like okay i don't i don't agree you can't make the movie or if you make the movie it can't be adjacent in the movie and if you make the movie they can't be this can't be that and i'm gonna throw a little salt into this party because you know who else is a part of this is uh a little royalty this guy in la he's famous they call him king james as in lebron james Mm -hmm. He owns a part of the cake. Mm. Uh, last I heard is LeBron James actually owns the rights to the hockey mask. Wow. So yeah, it's it's been a it's been a mix up, but <clears throat> I'll tell you a funny story. Um, we had a gentleman by the name of, by the name of Roy Lee on our podcast recently. We have not released that episode yet because it's tied into a movie that I can't talk about yet. But he, basically, he invited us to see the movie on the Disney lot, the Walt Disney Studios, you know, in Burbank. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was funny because I'm walking around in the studios to a watch a horror movie, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the movie that I saw is, is so good. And um, there's only been three movies in the last 10 years in the theater that I saw that made my heart race where I was just like felt uncomfortable. And this is one of this is this is the third one. So and the, the preview to this movie is already out. It's a movie called Barbarian. Mm -hmm. You could watch it. You can go on YouTube, type in Barbarian trailer. You could watch it. It's an Airbnb horror movie. OK. <laughs> and it stars um, Bill Skarsgård, who's famous for being Pennywise, the, the clown, you know, from it, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's. It's just him and the lead girl, uh, Georgina. I can't think of her name right now. Um, but I'll tell you, what you see in the preview is not the movie. Like, you're you're in for a wild surprise. Shocking. And that movie made my... Like, it almost... I thought my heart was going to stop. Because, you know, I was just like... 
I was just like, fuck, where is this? Like, what's about to happen? Because it's, it's intense. Yeah. Um, and I thought, this is crazy. The craziest movie I've seen all year is on the Disney lot, and it's not even a Disney movie. I mean, it is a Disney movie because they now own 20th Century Studios, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, it's it's going to be one of my top favorites of the year for sure. So the gentleman who produced this movie, he's also attached to the biggest horror movies over the last 20 years, you know? Yeah. He put it into theaters. He he brought The Ring from Jap- Japan to America to make a remake. He, oh, I, re- I remember what a big deal that was. Yeah, wasn't that crazy? And, you know. Yeah. He also I actually went to see it and I was scared the whole time, but I went. I can't believe you saw that. That's a pretty frightening movie. Yeah. I don't remember why or who tricked me into it. <laughs> I was definitely tricked. Uh, some guy for sure. I, when did it come out? I feel like I, w- I would have been too young. I would say t- early 2000s. To be talking to boys. Huh? No, you were never too young talking to boys like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear that story. Don't hear okay. those stories. Wait, well. I think I it was early 2000s, know. I think. Yeah. See, I was too young. Yeah, right. <laughs> Miss, <laughs> like the meme that's going around. Miss, I'm too young to watch anything or I'm too young to deal with boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was already in her teens. So I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I was in my teens. None of the boys wanted to talk to me, though, if I'm honest. Don't want to hear those stories. I really don't. Because I don't believe them. <laughs> well, believe it. I was too skinny and scrawny. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah. So, whatever. I've healed those insecurities, I think, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny that we had him on our podcast? Episode's not even out yet, and the story already broke that we chatted with him about yeah. that. And yep, on gizmodo.com. Oh, it's all over dun, the internet. Dun, dun. It's all over the internet, which is so weird. Um, but he's a great conversation. I wish we had more time with him. I wish I had, we had him in person because, like I said, how does one guy you've never heard of behind the biggest horror movie releases of the last 20 years, you know? Mm-hmm. So he's definitely got, like, a, a taste for what's good, you know? Like, he told us a story, the movie I just watched, you know, um, mm-hmm. the Barbarian movie. He said nobody wanted to make it, you know, and um, that he did. When he saw it, he's like, I'm going to make this without the studio. We're going to make it on our own. And they and they did. And then the studio, the only studio who bought it was basically Disney, 20th Century Studios, you know, and which is shocking because it's like, you know, they're not in the market for buying horror movies, you know, but they did because they saw how amazing it was, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, I left there with my heart racing. I was like, fuck this movie, man. It's not it's yeah. not at all what I thought it was going to be, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I want. As a mm-hmm. horror-loving movie enthusiast, that's what I want. You got to do something to shock me. And look, blood, none of that blood, gore, body parts, that shit does not shock me, you know? Like, shock me because you're telling me a creepy story, you know? Mm-hmm. Shock me because you're going to give me a twist that I did not see coming or shock me because you have a character that's just bad, you know, like as mm-hmm. a bad person, you know, um, you know, so things like that, you know, so, but I recommend that movie doesn't come out to, I think, September or something. I don't know when, but I think that's going to be a most talked about for the year for sure. Yeah. Go see and that. then um, <laughs> you had a story about Christine McConnell. Do you want to share? Um, I can't. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to share off offline. Yeah. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Um, no, nah, I mean, yeah, I'll share it off. I'll share it offline. Cause I'll, you know, yeah. like I said, I may not be a fan of hers anymore, but I got respect for whatever she's, she's doing. She can continue doing, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's a funny story. Um, well, let's not talk about it then. Cause then people are going to be like, damn, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> they can ask you you can tell them right like my sources your sources yeah <laughs> don't reveal your sources <laughs> yeah so you know for kirk hammett i like how they have him on the website as a vintage horror collector and then lead guitarist of metallica yeah <laughs> that dude no he's a he's a badass like he knows his history you know what i'm saying and like i don't i've seen those movies and i, I know you know uh the characters in the movies and the actors and all that, but he knows the history, you know, mm-hmm. he knows who did the makeup and the costumes and the effects. And, you know, so he's like, a he's a passionate guy about that, which is really cool, you know, and, and few and far between uh, people like him like that, that respect Hollywood history from the origins of horror, you know? Yeah. 
And now, you know, we're in August, so people are putting up Halloween stuff now. Yeah. So what do you think? Is it too soon? No. Never too soon? No. There's just, there's a going <laughs> there's a going joke over the last few years, like it's been going backwards. Like it's been like, oh September, Halloween. And it's like August, you know, like July. Now it's like <laughs> now it's like June, you know? Yeah. And it's like gotta go to home goods, you know, and gotta you know, so Oh I, my god, I know. So I'm like I'm like, that's you know, those companies are making so much money by doing because they realize, you know, um, yeah, and people can't wait, like just yeah. to, to they stock up on all this stuff, and and my stories are filled with my friends who are just buying this stuff or showing or showing me at least where I can get these coffee mugs or T-shirts or you know candelabras mm. or whatever, you know, and yeah, and I buy none of that stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a collector of anything anymore. I got yeah. rid of, I got rid of everything. Like I'm I'm kind of simplest, like just you know. Just a few science books and a few guitars and that's it, you know? I mean, yeah. Um, but it's fun. I, I like to see every year what people design, what they make. And mind you, this is the stuff you see at the conventions I was just telling you about, like the Midsummer Scream. Mm-hmm. Like this, yeah. that's the kind of stuff you can find there, you know? Not just at Midsummer Scream, but there's other conventions year round, you know? Like uh, yeah. Creepy LA or Season Screamings or Monster Palooza a few months ago, you know? So people are making these cool things year round and, and the cons are where you can get them. Um, but right now during the season is where you can find them at, you know, home goods or, you know, home Depot or Michael's or whatever. Yeah. You know? So it's time to start shopping. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. I, I, I do appreciate people that go out and, and, and decorate. Like I, I, I think it's a fun atmospheric thing to do, you know, mm-hmm. and just to get in, in the spirit of, of, of things, you know, and, and I, and I admire people that do it. You know, I, I, I just don't. And I sometimes I wish I did, but I just don't. And um, but it's fun. But, you know, I, I think we're, I think we're finally getting back to where, I mean, hopefully, there's not another crazy variant or freaking monkeypox or whatever going around. You know that people can start having Halloween parties again and feel safe doing so. And you know, and you know that's that's what the season's all about. You know. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it this year. I even already kind of know what I'm going to dress up as. Really? So I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Can you reveal or is it a secret? Uh, it's a secret. Mm. And... I've only told one person, I think. Oh, nice. <laughs> and are, are, you, are you decorating at all? Decorating or any, any plans? Well, I, you know, I don't decorate per se like for Halloween, but I do put like pumpkins out. That's like the most I'll do. But I was thinking maybe I might change that this year. I'm feeling very in the mood of decorating this year, so I'm really excited. So, hence my question, since everyone's posting on their, like, stories or, like, on Twitter, you know, their Halloween decor, I'm, like, getting excited already, and I'm like, fuck, it's August. So, <laughs> so is, is the, is your, I might this year. Is your Think Pink uh, vibe going to come down for a while and go dark? Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I Are you talking about my pink tree? <laughs> you're pink everything <laughs> oh yeah so i just yeah. I, my bed sheets aren't pink anymore so i'm slowly starting to change the colors i think mm. yeah so maybe by i don't know but that's the plan is to slowly change stuff nice so it'll be less less feminine still feminine but maybe not as pink that's funny <laughs> i was thinking she's, mary's gonna be like yeah i got pink spider webs this year <laughs> like, right i totally no. i mean yeah <laughs> I, I think I hit the point where I'm like, yeah, maybe let's change it up a bit. Oh, uh, that's so, funny. Yeah. So if you ever come over, like, what, in a year or so? Yeah. Maybe it won't be pink. I should Sounds be done right. by then. <laughs> You're going like neutral orange or something? No, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm just kind of neutral, but still feminine, I think. I don't know. Nice. I'll figure it out, Leonie. <laughs> but thank you so much for hanging with me again oh, i really you. really wanted to talk to you about this and you know you're the expert for me obviously um so it was nice to hear about the convention and then kind of talk about some of the movies coming oh, out yeah. yeah oh you know there's another event that we that we just did friday sorry i, I, I didn't forget yeah. to mention um i think because i'm no i'm pretty sure you did not see the movie but i'm still gonna mention it have you seen the movie Jennifer's Body with uh, Megan Fox. I have not seen it, but obviously I know it's a cult classic yes. and probably the one movie that Megan Fox is always remembered 
by, or I'm sure people follow her on that. Yeah. Um, so yes, I have not seen it, but yes, I know about it just like I think everyone else does. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course people think of her from transformers and all that, but you know, in the horror community, it's definitely this movie because it, it has a, you know, a huge cult following, you know, mm-hmm. um, I recommend it cause it's a horror comedy. Yes. There's some gross out moments, you know, whatever. It's not scary. It's just funny. Um, the, you know, Diablo Cody, who won the Oscar for writing uh, Juno, she wrote this movie. She wrote Jennifer's Body, and it addresses, you know, the Me Too movement. And, and just to think that Jennifer's Body came out in 2009, okay? Think about that. Mm-hmm. It addressed the Me Too movement and, like, abuse and all that shit back then, okay? And, and nobody was listening when that movie came out. People mm-hmm. put it aside, and they're like, no, we don't get it. It's just too much, you know? It, you know, they thought the message was too much because it's like, you know, there's two girls making out, you know, in the movie, you know, and, you know, it's, it's just, okay. The, pe- the studios gave up on it, but it got a huge cult following and we wanted to do a party for it at the 10th anniversary, you know, with Megan Fox and everything, you know, because my co-hosts own the wardrobes that her, her outfits that she wore in the movie, she did her cheerleading outfit, mm-hmm. uh, her Letterman jacket her prom dress the the bloody one that that um where she becomes a demon you know like my friends own that you know they they collect horror movie props you know used from the actual movies you know so you know we talked about we talked about that with megan fox and she was like oh wow you know so we thought we'll throw a party for the 10th anniversary and that did not work out you know for a number of reasons but we said you know what eventually someday we'll do something for this movie you know something fun right Mm -hmm. and um we did friday night at the federal bar in in uh north hollywood we took over the federal and we did a night uh to celebrate the movie and yeah we we sponsored it with liquid death and um the mystic museum put it together they if you don't know the mystic museum they're in burbank um they're like a shop that specializes in like rarities, oddities, the occult, like, you know, oh my God. books oh and my stuff. God. You ever been there? Yes. So that's where I'm planning to go for mine. I was trying to go in the next like month. <laughs> you should go. It's a fun place. It's a fun place. Yes. And uh, they have, uh, they keep expanding their store, you know, mm-hmm. um, they have like, t- they, they did the slashback video, you know, they have the, like a video store from the eighties, you know, like set up with all the, all the titles from the eighties, you know, like it looks like a video store and. They do, you know, photo ops so you can, you know, pose, you know, and take photos and stuff. You know, they do a lot of cool things and they're really passionate about the detail. Like they'll mm-hmm. they'll match it exactly from the movie, you know, like the exact couch, the exact bed, the exact books, the colors, everything, you know, so they're very passionate. So they took over the federal bar in North Hollywood and they made the bar the prom scene from the movie. Nice. So like they decorated um, like with those white fake light plants you know from the movie and then we had the banners that said uh welcome back devils you know like the high school you know um like they would they would paint you know like on those huge banners and stuff you know and then um all the bartenders and servers were wearing the letterman letterman jackets with d the dk mm-hmm. which is devil's kettle mm-hmm. it's, it's the name of the high school you know mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of cosplayers a lot of class, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of girls dressed up as as Megan Fox from the movie. The, the different versions of her: the prom dress version, the demon version, the cheerleader version. Um, a lot of people dressed up as Adam Brody in the movie. You know, so people picked different characters and dressed up as them. And uh, we had a pop punk emo band play "Too Bad, So Sad." They did all covers of all the two thousands bands, uh, My Chemical Romance. You know, um, like. Um, you know, the use like all, all those cool bands from the ninth from the two thousands, you know, and all those pop emo bands. So they played a huge set covers of all those bands, some bleak when they too, you know, and, and the cool surprise was in the movie, there is a song that Adam Brody's band in the movie, there's a song called to the, through the trees. Mm-hmm. And that band, um, because they, they do something in the movie, they become famous, right? Like they gain, they gain, you know, they get signed to a major record label. They become famous. That becomes our hit song. So the, in the movie, that song plays like 10 times, right? And 
it's almost like comedy because every time somebody hears a song they're like fuck i'm sick of this song you know or, or, or turn it <laughs> off you know so it's almost it's almost funny you know now the guy who wrote that song the guy who performed that song who actually sang it in the movie is in the movie but he's not the singer like adam brody is the quote-unquote singer you know um so he just plays the guitar player you know on the side mm-hmm. but his name is ryan levine and he wrote the song and the, the crazy thing is you know he brought his acoustic guitar to play the song live you know in front of the audience on friday night and and one of the craziest things is he's telling a story that his band got dropped from the record label right when they filmed this movie mm. so it's exactly the opposite of what happens in the movie like in the movie they become super famous in real life the record label just dropped their band and he tells a story he goes i honestly thought we were going to become a very very successful huge band because his music is good like his he, they were good you know so it's a very sad story it's a very good song <laughs> And he played it live and i think the audience just just loved it you know just it was it was a good little touch you know um but it was a fun event and i think they're gonna do more of these themed horror you know events um you know so if you think of movies that have like dance scenes in them you know mm-hmm. there's possibilities that they might be doing something with them um and the cool thing was that you know um Portions of the proceeds, to, you know, from this event went to mental health and, you know, charities and organizations that support women's rights, you know, so it was a good little fundraiser, you know? Yeah. And sold out. We sold it out. So it was like. Perfect. 300 people was packed and everybody had a good time. Dude, next time let me know about this kind of stuff so I can go. I will. <laughs> Sometimes I have no idea because I'm not necessarily looking at horror culture type of events. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's, it it's fun. like I said, you know, when I talk horror people just roll their eyes because you know they're imagining blood creature monsters you know crazy shit and it's like no this a lot of cool stuff you know it's like yeah and the fact that you know we did a club night we've never done this before and you know and we you know we just came off of one thing after oh like you know midsummer scream then this was back to back and we're kind of like barely had time to breathe you know (laughs) yeah i'm like man so uh but it all worked out so you know we're gonna be doing more i'm sure you know so yeah and well, I, I don't know i don't know when probably this fall i'm sure another one but yeah i'll, I'll let you know and if some, something fun might be interested i'll let you know yeah um perfect i'll be waiting <laughs> yeah <laughs> well thank you for joining me this was a nice uh, like little catch-up yeah so thanks it, for having me. it ended up being a halloween uh i guess you can say midsummer halloween podcast halloween episode. in august <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I I sincerely hope that you get into the spirit, uh, pun intended. You know, and and have fun because that's what Halloween's about. Just have fun, do yes. something, do your. It's community. You know, it's yeah, your friends, yeah. your loved ones, yeah. whoever. You know, it's like just have fun with them. You know, do something. There's yeah. lots to do, and you and I did two. Well, we we did the pumpkin thing. The that year and that was fun it was almost empty right it was just like you and i in the whole park almost you know yeah um so there's a lot of events going on this year and they need your support you know and, and yes take yeah. take take your loved ones your girlfriend boyfriend family kids kids mm-hmm. you know take them out it's fun things that do. plus we have nice weather i mean you know it's like we're mm-hmm. lucky it's not going to be snowing you know yeah so something to do well, and have fun. you never know <laughs> it might be a crazy year and no, i'm just kidding yeah <laughs> Might get hit by a hurricane, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, listen to Leone. Support your... There's a lot of events and, you know, people are putting out events and, you know, go out, take your kids and, you know, get the economy going, guys. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you can. If you can. <laughs> if you can, of course. Of yeah. course. Well, thank you, Leone, and I hope you join me next time. I will. You let me know whenever you'd like. Yay. <laughs> well thank you everyone for listening we'll see you next time bye that was episode 93 of the purposely curious podcast make sure to subscribe on apple Podcasts, spotify and on most podcast platforms and follow us on social media at purposely curious on instagram and at purposely c pod on twitter that's purposely the letter c pod until next time you know what to do